As you probably know, Apple charges premium for extra storage if you are going to buy some kind of Apple device. And since most of their devices don't really allow for upgrades on this later on, running out of space can be a real headache. So that's where an external hard drive comes in, not just a handy solution, but sometimes it is a necessity. And I'm sort of facing this problem myself since my M4 MacBook Pro uh, 16 inch only has 512 gigabytes of storage. And for me with uh, music production and especially video editing, this space up uh, fills up pretty fast. Why I got the 512 is a completely another story. It has to do with a special deal. But in this video, I will put an uh, external SSD to the test to see how fast it is compared to the internal SSD of the Mac. And uh, I will also show you how you you can sort of move different files to the SSD to free up space on your internal device. Plus I will also explain why not moving your home folder on your Mac is probably the best idea and just share some useful tools on how to handle mounting and unmounting of the drives uh, in a better way. We have a bunch of different external storage solutions for a Mac, but today I'm going to take a look at uh, an external enclosure from a company called Psych. They sent it over for me to for free to try out, so I want to disclose that in this video. And I have bought uh, a two terabyte SSD myself to uh, go along with this video and this enclosure. So many of these external SSDs comes in a variety of sizes, brands and speeds. And I sort of like going the do-it-yourself route because I think you can get the best possible speeds here. Now, speed is not always important on an external SSD, depending on sort of what you do. If you are just storing your photo library or if you are just sort of storing your music library, you are good enough with a uh, regular external SSD. So if you go for a brand name SSD like SanDisk or Kingston or something like that, it should be fine. Just do a quick Google search and see if they have any problems because some of them can, but uh, yeah, and nowadays they are usually pretty good. But I like something that is uh, snappy, especially if I'm going to browse through audio samples and manage gigabytes of video storage and uh, things like that. So the one I got is a so-called USB 4 NVMe SSD enclosure. This particular one from Psyche is also a toolless one, so you can sort of easily install your SSD of choice here. You just pop off the cover, you insert the SSD and you should be good to go. It comes with uh, two types of USB type type C cables. It's a short one that is sort of tucked away on the side of this enclosure here. And you have a longer 50 centimeter cable uh, as well. It supports PCI Express Gen 4 SSDs and it has a theoretical max write speed of 3.1 gigabytes per second and a read speed of 3.8 gigabytes per second. And this will of course depend on what type of SSD you pair with, with and what sort of computer you pair it with. But uh, we are going to test that pretty soon. It's compatible with Thunderbolt 3 or 4, USB 2.0 and USB 3.0. Uh, to Gen 1 and 2, and you can use it for our Mac, PC, iPad, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and others as well. And the brains in this enclosure is a uh, ASM2464PD chip from Us Media, which is also used in uh, other external enclosures. So I'm testing the internal drive of the Mac first, and I can see that uh, on uh, write I get uh, 4,100 megabytes per second, and on read I get uh, around 5,200 megabytes per second on the internal drive of the Mac. And when we run the same test on the external enclosure from Psyche, we can actually see that I'm getting uh, almost 3,300 megabytes per second uh, write speed and 3,300 megabytes per second read speed. So numbers wise, it seems like this en external enclosure delivers on the speed at least. So now I want to talk about what I want to do with this external drive to save some space, internal space on my Mac. So first of all, it's uh, about moving files. Since I do YouTube, I edit, edit my videos on this Mac and with 512 gigabytes, I can't really work on many projects at the same time before I have to offload them to my storage server. Now I, I can have everything related to YouTube stored on this drive and it's really fast to work from. I mean, a YouTube project for me can often be anywhere from 25 to almost 150 gigabytes. 
so the internal max storage starts filling up fast especially if i have the when i have the 512 variant i also have a folder which has uh, everything related to my music production and the problem here is that <laughs> that folder is also 260 gigabytes in size i am actually having it stored in my icloud drive since i have the two terabyte subscription so depending on what project I work on, the Mac will sort of juggle between files, having files online or having them locally on the Mac. When I am, for example, let's say browsing through files in my music production, audio samples, uh, I want to audition audio samples and I just press my <laughs> keyboard key and go down. It takes like uh, five seconds to sort of load the file and to hear a clap sound or something like that. It's really annoying and I have a very fast fiber internet connection and that doesn't matter. So having those files locally, I think will be a, uh, a nice thing to have. <laughs> Another thing you can do is to move your photo library and I will insert a video here so you can sort of see how I do it. I use Apple Photos to synchronize photos and videos, social media stuff I do, but most of the files live in the cloud because I have activated the option to optimize Mac storage in uh, Apple Photos. So my entire photo library is around 140 gigabytes and I mean, that's after actually cleaning it up. And now I can have it with me locally, moving it to the external hard drive. So the actual process of moving it is pretty easy. You have to make sure that the Photos app is closed and you have to go into the Finder images and you just drag your photo library over to the external hard drive. I like to create a folder first called images or something like that. And you can drag that folder again to your sidebar on your Mac so you have uh, quick access to it. Next time you start photos, you want to hold down the option key and this will give you a window where you can select the uh, where the newly uh, moved uh, library is. You just choose your external drive and you find your photo library there and you select that you want to open it. Uh, one thing you might have to do is to go into the settings of photos and tell photos as this is your main photo library so that you can sort of sync it with uh, iCloud uh, later on. If you're into music production and if you use for example Logic Pro it can come with a pretty hefty library if you decide to download everything. If you want to have all samples and plugins downloaded here you can move this library to an external hard drive and I mean it's easy. I can show, sort of show you that here as well. You click Logic Pro in the menu, you go to sound library and you select relocate si sound library and here you will be able to select your external hard drive. It will move the files uh, for you. You don't have to move the actual Logic Pro application. You sort of want the app where it is. Uh, the actual application doesn't really take up that much space so I wouldn't move stuff like that from the application folder to the external drive. So if you produce music and you use a lot of sample heavy plugins such as for example native instruments or 8.io or something like that they usually have an option of installing the actual media files for the plugin to an external storage and the actual plugins and the sort of application can live internally on your Mac's internal drive because those don't really take up that much space. It's sort of the data that takes up most of the space. So make sure you have checked this on all type of plugins you use if it's related to music production and again, especially the plugins that has a lot of samples. Now I want to talk a little bit about the home folder because uh, some people might recommend moving your home folder. For most users I would uh, advise you to seriously think through this because I wouldn't really recommend a beginner to move their home folder to an external hard drive. I would say move, try to move your music and your photos libraries first, move your documents, your large documents you're working on on your Mac and see if this gives you enough space do all of these things first and you might not need have you might not have to um, need to have to move the home folder the reason I highly recommend to not moving your home folder is because I don't think it's reliable enough you might risk losing data if you don't really know what you are doing here. I'm not saying that it's not working but this is not something Apple is really sort of officially supporting or I mean focusing on supporting with brand new macOS updates or security updates. 
if you have moved your home folder, it might break. There are so little users that are actually moving their home folder. For Apple to sort of uh, prioritize the resources on helping people with this, I don't think they are actually doing much of that. And the risk uh, means that you can't, for example, log in or access your files anymore. So I recommend have, uh, having everything related to your Mac with uh, everything related to boot and startup and all of that actually on the internal drive on your Mac. Another risk can be a simple thing as just a bad cable to your external hard drive. Imagine if you have a laptop with the external drive connected, pick up the laptop and to go somewhere. And while you do so, you sort of get a bad connection to the external drive making it drop out. If your Mac was writing critical system files at that point, you could have a corrupted drive having problems uh, starting up your uh, machine. So while you can still move your home folder, in my opinion, the risk is not worth it at all. If you have an external drive, you might occasionally see the message disk not ejected properly. And this means that uh, yeah, the external drive has been disconnected unexpectedly from your system. It could result in corrupted files or it could work just fine. So this is one of the drawbacks having an external uh, drive is that you have to eject it properly from your system. There is no easy way to sort of do this automatically. So before you sleep or uh, you turn off your Mac, you should eject uh, the drive in the Finder or use tools that can do it automatically for you. For example, there's a tool called uh, Ejectify. It will automatically unmount external drives when your Mac starts sleeping and it will mount them again when it wakes up. So you can check out some tools like that in the description below. I will have links to them. Uh, they're not free, but I think they're pretty cheap, at, at least some of them. I hope you now realize that you can use an external SSD to offload your Mac's internal drive. And the last th thing I want to tell you is make sure you back up your external drive to something else. Don't just have all your important data in one place. If you do this, you will 100% regret it at some point in your life. It may take years, but trust me, you will regret having no backups. Just a little side note after all of this in terms of if you don't want to buy an external drive, there is one other option which I have actually used and it's the iCloud drive thing. Let's say if you have a Mac with uh, 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of storage, you can go and buy an iCloud subscription and get some more storage there. There you will have iCloud Drive in your Mac's Finder. And you can move projects to the iCloud Drive and it will sort of automatically decide if the files should be on your Mac or if they should be on in the cloud. So the Mac will automatically sort of uh, adjust this. And what I noticed on my Mac is that the uh, speed of the Mac was just, um, yeah, when I started editing videos, when I started doing music production projects, the disk speed went down significantly. And that's because it's so downloading some file which was in the cloud. You really notice this when you are doing work. Of course, it depends on what type of work you do. If it's just documents or images or something like that, I think it's fine but uh, for me music production stuff like that it was really annoying so I sort of wanted to have those files uh, locally. Another thing I was thinking about having the files in iCloud Drive is also sort of a sort of an backup not really because they are synced and if something is happening with the file it will be synced to the cloud. It's just a side note about iCloud Drive and it is possible to leverage that if that's the, your only option. So subscribing, commenting and liking the video and sharing it with people that perhaps need it is always nice and will help to build this uh, YouTube channel. And with that said, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.